from Las Heras, Mendoza, Argentina. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Palace of Dreams, Kevin Diamante Munoz. Out of the blue corner on my right at 52.14 kilograms. As a professional, 11 wins with just two losses. He boxes in the white, pink, pink, uh, white and pink trunks. Nine of his 11 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Edenvale, trained by coach Fusim Tolo. Six times South African amateur champion. Bob Hauteng, an ABU junior bantamweight champion, and the current WBA Pan African Super Flyweight Champion. No stranger to this very venue, no stranger to this very ring. He is Ricardo, the Magic Man, Malachi. Both fighters have had their success on the international stage. Both will want more. As they tee up here for okay, the uh, new instructions in the dressing room. The Bama commands at all times, protect yourselves at all times. Any, anything here is low. Anything here is low, okay? Shake hands, good luck, God bless. Bring your Third man in the ring is Dion Duarte here from Cape Town. Very, very experienced referee. And there's no doubt they'll be in good hands here. Ricardo Marachica and Kevin Luiz Munoz. Ricardo Malachika will fight out of the blue corner in the pink trunks. Kevin Luis Munoz, Diamante with the black and white. The belt's out for round number one of a scheduled 12 for the IBO Junior Bantamweight Championship of the World. Both boxers fighting out of the orthodox stance. And Munoz connects with Malachika who's on the ground. Really stand, you don't meet him, OK? Not sure what happened there, looked like a slut. What's next, man? What's next? Munoz has come out fighting. When your last fought in February of this year, a month later for Ricardo Mother Chica, who beat Adrian Larresen of the Philippines at Empress Palace with a technical knockout in the fifth of ten rounds. Nice lunging punches from Mother Chica. Goes to the body now. Munoz looks just as hungry even though he's on the back foot. Now to right hand from Mother Chica. Munez comes forward. Mother Chica's got to keep his hands up. Munoz is a very experienced fighter. 19th fight of his career. Comes into the fight in, with his, in his 111th round. 66th round of boxing for Ricardo Malajika. Both tasted success. Malajika's lost twice the last time against uh, Siko Cortole in April of 2022. Only one loss for Munoz in his career. Nice right hand from Munoz, but it didn't land. This, of course, like Kevin said, for the vacant IBO Junior Bantuay Championship of the World. Nice right hand, left, left uppercut. Not much power in it from Malajika, but he's signaling some intent here. Wide eyes. But he was taken away. Mundo also didn't have much power from Malachika. Nice shot, jabs from Ricardo. Another one. I think as you said that he heard you, Kevin, and he threw a powerful right hand. Right, another powerful right hand. There's a stinging jab from Munoz Diamante. This is going to be an interesting one. Both the fighters establishing the jab. Is fighting at the 52.20 kilogram weight limit. One of the biggest of fighters. But we expect lots of action in this one. Well, the Jika Trevor catch Munoz on the turn. Well, a good opening round from both fighters. They've come to fight. Who wants this world title? It's vacant. Good jab from Malajika. Good jab from Munoz. Oh, good jab from the South African. on the turn from Malachiko tries the same thing and then has to hold on as Munoz swings back with 10 seconds remaining in round one Stop. entertaining first round Brian yeah good opening it up I thought it was pretty even until the end well, the judges might favor Malachika but it was close water please 
and Manchester favour Malajika as well. We see Matala and Marco Luis are working in Malajika's corner. Thank you. Hit, hit, thank you. Only thank you. People, thank you. You understand? So, yeah, Malajika basically fell over Munoz's foot. Oh, that's, that's illegal. I'll tell you what, later in the fight, there could have been a point of deduction. Yeah, he could have lost it. Basically, he should have lost the point for that. Nice combination of punches there from uh, Ricardo Manochica. Former WBO featherweight champion in the trainer there. Pablo Pablo Chapa. Chapa. Well, there was a time that uh, Diamante Munoz looked as if he was in a spot of bother, but he managed to get him out of it. Got out of it. Round two of the scheduled 12 for the vacant IBO Junior Bantamweight Championship of the World. Manachika by 10 points to 9 in my opinion in the first round. Almost gets caught coming forward. Munoz slipping punches. Manachika needs to keep those hands nice and tidy. Just a little slap with the wrist there from Manachika. Munoz obviously not. Such hand. a good record for nothing. He can fight. Right hand uh, touch the side of the face of Munoz from Ricardo Malachika. Both showing good lateral movement in the early stages. This, this one staying away from the bombs that will certainly come through the duration of this fight. Shot jabs from both fighters. Munoz looking for the right hand. You can see he's loading up for the right hand, but he's not landing. Jake is finding the range. Right up the cut and uh, left to the body from Manajika. Munoz wants to come on the inside. Watching a bit of footage of uh, Munoz in action when he fought against Abel Leandro Silva in a fight in 2022. And uh, yeah, he, he looked pretty good, he looked very patient. In, in that fight, and he was backing away, fighting almost a counter attack as a big swinging right hand from Malachika. But he wasn't afraid to, to come inside and mix it. One thing that impressed me was the straight punches that I saw from Munoz in that fight. Is he going to be allowed to get close enough to land for Malachika? Looks very fluid at the moment in his movement. Now, smooth Malachika switches it up from Southport to Orthodox, works for him. Got to keep the hands up while he's doing it, though. Munoz is coming forward. And so far, a good fight here in the junior bantamweight division. Possibly Ricardo Malajika shading this round as well. Now, Munoz never afraid to just go onto the back foot. Soak up uh, a little bit of the action. Nice little popping left hand from Malajika. Then he comes forward. He just got caught on the inside of it there, did Ricardo. You've got to be careful when you come forward at pace to an opponent who is a reasonable counter puncher. Oh, Happy little left hand from Malajika. Yeah, Malajika's got the work there, going nice and smooth here yeah, in round number two. Yeah, it's a good fight so far from Malajika. He's fighting the right fight. He's keeping his opponent at bay yes. and he's using the chair to good effect so far. It's, it's a good start for the South African. That is a nice little right hand, and although Munoz was backing away, he certainly would have felt that one. And then on the turn, swinging right hand from Ricardo Malajika. Mayipulje, bring it back. The promoters for the uh, Rugby World Cup that will start on the 1st of September and go till the 28th of October, live on your World of Champions, Super Sport Variety 4 and to be streaming. Watch out for that. Are the Springboks going to bring it back? Well, so far, so good for the young South African. Two rounds possibly in the bag. Ten rounds to go. Start of round number three of a schedule 12. 
Munoz a little slow off his stool, but I don't think it's too much problem with that. Both fighters fighting out of the orthodox stance. Seems to be a little bit of a problem on the black trunks of the Argentinian. The referee Dion Duarte really quick to spot anything that's a miss inside the square jungle. Yeah, like you said, Kevin, uh, Dion Duarte has been in the big league already. He's uh, been a referee and a judge in many big fights, and he's a brilliant referee, I must say. Yeah, he certainly is. He's got a huge, huge reputation, not only in South Africa, but uh, globally as well. Malachika continues with the game plan. Not sure why he looked down on that occasion. Don't you should take your eyes off your opponent no. in the fight game. Definitely don't take your eyes off your opponent in this game. But he's popping the jab now. See, there's a sharp left hand from Munoz. Receives one back from Malachika. Two minutes remaining in round three of a schedule 12. It's pretty even at the moment. Shot from Munoz. Nice right hand from Malachika. Referee says to Munoz, he must keep his punches up. Malachika just holding it down for the moment. Munoz hurt Malachika with a left hook. Tries the uppercut as Munoz. There's lots of uh, chatter coming from the Munoz corner at the moment. Sensing they might be able to end this early. Don't push. Well, it's a better round, round for Munoz. Landed a big left to hurt Ricardo Malachika. Malachika's recovered. Just look for a moment that Malachika wanted to try and hold on to the gloves of Munoz. Roman Munoz looking confident, just bouncing on his toes. You know, what's interesting from Munoz is that he keeps his feet quite close together. Now Malachika oh. returns the punches oh. with interest. Lovely Back step here in round three towards the end of the round from Ricardo Magic Man Malachika. The round was close until now. Watch your head, watch your head. Both the, the boxes coming in simultaneously. Referee Duarte offers the warning. Yeah, it's been an interesting round, Brian. First of all, it was Munoz at the start of the round, and then Malachika with a combination towards the end of the second minute. And now that sharp jab from Malachika. Happy to see that Malachika can take a punch. Yeah, he got, he got caught to that left uh, early on in the round, Malachika, but he's recovered well. Right hand from Munoz. Well, it's a competitive fight in the junior bantamweight division here Cut. for the vacant IBO world title. South Africa's Ricardo, Magic Man Malachika against Argentinians Kevin Luis Diamante Munoz. Waiting for that left hand. It wasn't that one, that's for sure. Mr. Tom, that, that's, a, that's a yeah. lovely left hand from Luis Munoz. Good, good camera work from Supersport. Yeah, Malajika was holding on. He, he felt the power from Munoz. It's a world title fight. It's not going to be all your own way. You can do this yes. and both them you down there. Because it's like this. Yes. To look at the one. Do you understand what I say? Chuck is coming from Vusim Dole. He needs to focus, concentrate on oh, what tight. the trainer is saying as well. He would have been frustrated, I think, with uh, opening himself up to that left hand from Munoz. Done! Done! Come here, come here, come here. Okay, before, the, before this fight starts getting untidy, let me, let me caution both of these, okay? You watch your head and both of these watch the low blow and don't push. I'm, I'm here to break it, okay? Let's go. Yeah, Duarte is like the headmaster of the school. He, he gets him and he tells him exactly what he thinks. I wonder how uh, the referee Dion Duarte's uh, Spanish is. Rangy left hand from Malachika. Oh, he looked to unleash the combination there. Did Munoz contact with the right hand from Malachika? Trying some big punches in there is Munoz. Munoz is just doing the right thing. He's swinging with a left hook. He knows he can catch Ricardo Malajika with a left hook. Malajika's fighting a good fight, but those hands have got to be harder. The fight is watchful at the moment. It's been an entertaining fight so far. 
fourth round of the schedule 12 for the vacant IBO Junior Bantamweight Championship of the World. Reaching punch from Munoz. You've got to be careful with that. And he left his hand in the punch. He could have been tagged with the right hand of uh, Ricardo Madachica. Nice left hand from Munoz. He's looking sharp here, is the Argentinian. Much better round, round number four for Munoz. These but fighters still not learning uh, enough punches punch. to yeah. be. You know when guys try and fight off the back foot, Kevin, and they, they try and kind of punch, but they're not throwing punches. That's a straight right there as he launches forward this time, Ricardo Manachica. No reaction at all from Munoz. Left hand uh, uppercut on the run from Munoz. I like the left hook from Munoz, it's working. But Ricardo's penetrating with the straight right. One for you, one for me. Round number four. Nice double chair from Ricardo Malachica. So there's his eyes wide, wide open. Yeah, Malachica has that, that look about him, uh, Kevin. His, his, eyes, his eyes are wide open, which means he's very focused and concentrating. Lunging left hand from Malachica. Careful not to be caught on the inside by Munoz. Spoke about the patience that he showed in the fight that I watched against Abel. Leandro Silva. And they fought for the South American Junior Bantamweight Championship. Well, it's almost like one win one wants to give Kevin Munoz the round. Uh, the corner Malajika fights back towards the end of the round. So, depending what the judges like, let them make the decision. We are unofficial, of course. Difficult not to get caught coming forward with Munoz when he almost leaps in towards his opponent because uh, he's got his hands in the wrong position. He can be caught. Oh, good right hand from nice Munoz. Shot. Down the middle. Got the tension from the South African. That is a good round for both of the fighters. First round that I would have even between the two boxes. Well, there we see Kevin Lorena, the number one contender in the WBC for the bridge away title. Uh, he's having a big chat with his promoter, Rodney Berman, CEO of Golden Gloves. Kevin Lorena waving. Hopefully he'll be back in action in Raja and Empress Palace sometime later this year. We look forward to that. Kevin fills this place out, that's for sure. And the crowd love him. We see Matanda chatting to his man with a pink hairstyle. We believe he's slightly ahead on points, but there's eight rounds to go. Yeah, there certainly are, and there's still plenty that can happen. With not only in the next eight rounds, but maybe the next three of them. Munoz is looking sharp here. The bell sounds for the starts. That's round number five of a schedule 12. There's a world championship at stake here. RBO Junior Bantamweight right into the body from Munoz. It's a slight change in uh, what he does because he's uh, looking for that left hand. You like the left hand of Munoz, Brian? Yeah, he's got, he's got a terrific little left hook. Uh, Ricardo's got to be careful of because that snappy little left hook, which is uh, such a good punch for anybody. My favorite punch ever is a short six inch left hook. And Munoz does it quite well and he does it sneakily. Malajika's going to have to be careful of that, but Malajika's boxing a good fight, he's, he's, he's patient, he's using the jab, and he knows he's got 12 rounds, it's a world title, it's his first world title, both of them. Munoz again, as you've seen in previous footage of the Argentinian, waiting patiently on the outside, and then he leaps into the action and tries to throw punches from that sort of position, it's an interesting style, tries to throw the right hand on the inside, gets caught coming forward by Malajika. But then claims that there was a low blow. Referee says, box on. And excellent combination now from Manajika. Both of you watch your heads, okay? Both of you from the inside. Warning them both for head butting. Sharp left hand from the, the Argentinian fighter. Double jab from Manajika. Tries to follow up on another one here. Hasn't landed the right, but it does land the right now. That's Malajika. Yeah, Malajika's fighting a cool, calm and collected fight. Very smart for 25 year old. 
combination from Malachika. Finds the targets. He really does swing with some purpose, does Mugos, yeah, doesn't he? Another jump all over the top of each other. Two boxes. Back, back. He's not landing when yours and Malajika is landing, but he is playing with purpose. And he's always going to be dangerous. He's got 16 and 1 for nothing. That's for sure. It's Munoz. 20 seconds away from the end of round 5 of the schedule 12. Jeff's landing almost at will. The right left combination uppercuts from Malajika. Is he too far away for those punches to be really causing any problems for the Argentinian? Continues to lunge in though. And at some stage, surely Malajika's got to catch him coming forward like that. Yeah, he's a tough guy, the Argentinian. He's come to fight. The right hands from Malajika. Argentine, he's tough, there's no doubt about that. Well, Malajika winning his first round uh, in a couple. I thought he had won the first and second rounds in South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe round yeah, five yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. It's a pretty tough fight, there's not much to choose between the two boxes. Pulse of a Nation is the story of a South African football four-part documentary series live on PSL TV and DSTV streaming from Sunday the 10th of September. Want to know more about South African football? Pulse of the Nation is your story. Yes. Do you understand? Center punches. Center punches. One, two, one, two, three. It's got a busy in the corner of Ricardo Malachika. At the moment, it's a pretty even fight. Oh, Malachika box. ahead on my unofficial scorecard by a couple of points. But it's uh, a lot tighter than that one feels. And it's up to the judges. As you said, Brian, I mean, we've spoken about this before in the fight game. What type of uh, fighter does a judge prefer? The come forward? The counter, the counter punch at the peekaboo, the stick and move, you know, the judges have their preferences. Yeah, of course, Kevin, and that's why there's three judges around the ringside to, to make it as fair as possible. Three people looking at it differently, unbiasedly. And yeah, some, some uh, as you say, some of the judges like to come for a fighter, some like this, some typical boxer. But Malajik has got to be winning, he's throwing more punches, landing more punches. Munoz. Uh, needs to come and fight now whatever happens tonight Brian in this fight we know that uh, when Duncan Pollock reads the result if it does go to the scorecards we're going to hear and the new because yeah. this is for a vacant title absolutely <laughs> there definitely won't be and still no it'll be and the new <laughs> well picked up uh, Kevin Evans <laughs> I'll try my first and I think it's past Kevin Evans these two fighters trying to get past each other here, Munoz and Malachika. Munoz in the black trunks, Malachika in the pink, the pink hairstyle as well. Unmistakable, the South African. Not much going on in uh, round number six of the schedule 12. That's a nice little choppy right hand as he just catches Malachika changing direction. Uh, both these fighters are scientifically very good. A nice straight left hands from Ricardo Malachika. Pops the right hand. Turns that right hand. We've seen that right hand a couple of times when he just turns his body and catches uh, Munoz on the turn. Yeah, I like what Malachika is doing, Kevin. He's, he's fighting a, a, a calm fight. He's, he's calculated. He's thinking about it. He's not falling out of his own feet. Good left hand. Now he's at the southpaw stance. Switch hitter, big time is followed. He's Ricardo Malajika. Munoz says, bring it on, but he's a bit wild. Caught with a little right hand. Just as he tried to turn there, did Munoz. And I thought he'd almost caught uh, Malajika with a low blow at one stage. Well, what Munoz is doing now is the right fight. He's got a pressure on. Oh, and a good left hook from Munoz. He's got to go forward if he wants to win. And Malajika's got to be careful of that left hook. Well, there's a slight change in uh, in what he's doing because he was just, just almost standing back being patient and lunging in with a combination of punches. Now he's just coming forward. 
Well, that's what he's got to do. Tries to land the right hand and gets caught coming forward by Malachika. Right as we head towards the bell to end round number six. There's a nice little right hand in there as well. Ducking down the back here. From the man who hails from Argentina. I mean, both of the boxers had opportunities to shine in that round. But I've got it uh, even. I think both exchanged punches that were adequate enough to gain points. But I thought that Manachika was good in the opening stages, and Munoz maybe a little better towards the end of the round. Yeah, tough round to call. I would go with Munoz in that round, although in the slow motion it doesn't look like it. Yeah, tough, tough round to call. You know, you, uh, so the viewers know as well. You're allowed to call it even, it can be a 10 10 round. And, uh... okay. We're halfway through the fight. Brian, make it RBO Junior Bantamweight Championship of the World. Ricardo Malachica, Kevin Luis Munoz, South Africa against Argentina. Live at uh, Empress Palace, Palace of Dreams, Mecca of South African boxing. What doesn't happen here doesn't matter. Malajika starts to make the need it, make it happen now. Not enough punches from both fighters, especially Malajika at the stage. No, stop it! Stop punching! Stop it! World sports betting, no doubt, will be a busy place. It has been a busy place this evening, no doubt will be a busy place still. Because we still have Raw Knapp against uh, Prismas Law Zisk in the uh, International Junior Middleweight fight that comes up after the, the conclusion of this one. One minute into the second half of the fight. Quiet start to round number seven. And as I say, that Ricardo Manajika with a triple jab. Still lunging in a little bit here is Munoz. What stage does he lose patience and get caught by Malachika? He's a really nice, compact little fighter. I like the way he raises the right shoulder as well. Maybe not enough, but uh, Malachika's doing nicely. Slips a punch, lands the left. That's Malachika. Yeah, Munoz is decent, that's for sure. Given. I mean, that's why this is a world title fight. Both these guys are showing that they deserve to be fighting for a vacant IBO title. And it's, it's a close fight, it's a tough fight. Carter's complaining about Alba, but he's landing good punches. Well, Munoz is coming on strong in round number seven. Next up, uh, he, he showed uh, in the beginning of the round that he seemed to be quite keen to fight the way it fought in rounds five and six, but suddenly in the sec second half of the round, he's coming on strong. Is Kevin Munoz such an interesting fight? Such a technical bout. Well, it's an even fight so far. Munoz coming on strong in round number seven. Go and push his head down. needs to work and throw more punches Malajika wants to win this fight Munoz turning this round in his favor right hand nice little left clips the jaw of the man from Argentina well, he's coming on now Munoz Malajika pops the jab out of South Paul Stones Epping the right hand from Munoz another right hand from Munoz in the reaching left hand from Malajika ends Round number seven, and uh, I thought the man from Argentina looked pretty good in that round. Yeah, another good round for Munoz. Ricardo seems to be slacking in the middle rounds. Oh, yes, there was a big elbow. You see the elbow in Ricardo's eye. Definitely not intentional, accidental. And that definitely happens in the fight game. Close fight. Five rounds to go. Malajika's going to have to up his work rate. 
always put a flip back at the man. Do they change anything? Do they need to change anything? They don't need to change much. Ya está más lento. Recorre Manajica needs to up his work rate. A bit of blood coming from the nose of Kevin Kuzmich Diamante Munoz. Referee Twarch waiting for the seconds to leave the square jungle before the battle continues. For round number eight, if you just joined us, this vacant IBO Junior Bantamweight title fight. Kevin Luis Munoz from Argentina. And he faces South Africa's a magic man, Malachika. It's a close fight. Yeah, it's a very tight fight indeed. At, at what stage, Brian, does the uh, conditioning lapse by either one of the two boxers? Either that or at what stage do one of these fighters then take completely con complete control over the fight? Do we wait for the championship rounds, 11 and 12, or does something happen before that? No, it's got to, it's got to happen now, Kevin. You, you've got to go to the next level now. You've got to up your game. That's a tough one when you've been fighting for uh, seven rounds already. But, but look, this is what, what defines champions. When a guy after seven, eight rounds can up his game, he becomes the champion. So whoever ups their game now will possibly win this vacant title. A bit of uh, six rounds per fight for Munoz. <laughs> Munoz has got a lot of Vaseline on him. I'm surprised that the referee didn't stop it. Oh, good right hand from Malajika. Yeah, he's trying to lunge in those punches at the moment, Munoz. But there's not a lot coming back from the Argentinian, or the Argentine boxer. Takes a little right hand as Malajika. Trying to duck out of the way. Right hand from Malajika, left right. Big uh, swinging right misses from the South African. Left misses this time. Well, we'll play a bit better now from Malajika in round number eight. Reaching right hand from the South African. Another one, right hand from Malajika. Keep, keep it up, keep it up. One minute remaining in round eight of a schedule 12. Referee Duarte says, keep it up, gentlemen. Malajika's on the back foot. He needs to start putting on the pressure. Now it's quite interesting the way Munoz starts the fight and he allows Malajika to come to him. And when you get into the second half of the round, then he starts pushing forward and landing punches and trying to dominate matches and steal the round from the South African. Nice turn around here. Though from Malajika, a couple of good punches landing from the South African right above our commentary position. Stop it. If they uh, go through the ropes, they'll uh, land on your left right. <laughs> You're right above our head, Jack. Good work from Malajika. Turns his man around. Nice right hand. Gets a knock. Malajika is needed to win this round. And he possibly has won this round. I agree. Oh, good work from that. So there we go. And he needed that round just to kind of tidy it up again and get him slightly ahead. Yep, and an agreement with you. Nice work rate from Ricardo Malachika. Huh? We only have four rounds remaining. Four rounds. And the sport of boxing is a long, a long time. Respira, compadre. Si puede, respira. Respira. Respira por ahí. That's a triple punch. Right, left, right from Malachika. Ended up in the blood nose for Kevin Luis Munoz. Nine minutes, and nothing. We've got the time to go. Nine minutes. Don't let him do it. Ten for the heat. You say. Drop the straight hand shots. One, two. Boom, boom, boom. Now, who is the hungry uh, of the two so fighters? Really no, really Conor Malachika fighting on home territory. Nine. It's his 13th bout yes. at Empress Palace. He's only uh, had one fight outside go of Empress Palace. Go there, go there, go there. And that was at Sun City. What's up over what, when what's he lost against the Siko Cotole. Now, the referee does spot too much Vaseline on the face of Kevin but. Luis Munoz. The action comes thick and fast at the start of round number nine of a schedule 12. And as you said, Brian, this is the time where the fighters need to start uh, bringing out their number one game plan. He's pushing forward early in the round. We don't often see that from Munoz. He's normally a lot more patient. He's looking as if he's more purposeful here in round nine. 
Yeah, I've got a record of winning by a couple of points, but, it's, but whoever wins the last couple of rounds. You say a couple of points, I've got it, uh, a couple of points as well. 78 to 76 currently. But of course, yeah, I'm going with two points to Conor Malajika at this stage, but two points is not enough. There's four rounds to go, and Munoz is throwing that left hook. Yeah, he's gone back to the fight plan here, and, and you know, those punches of purpose, meaning he gets clipped with a little left hand from Malajiko, who suddenly seems a little bit surprised at the purpose shown here by Munoz. He's got to turn it around, though, Malajiko. And, you know, I say it every time we commentate, Kevin, and I'll say it for the rest of my life, the guy coming forward and throwing the most punches is going to be winning the fight. What's your head, Jim Corey? So, when the Corey goes forward, he looks good. When okay? Munoz goes forward, he looks good. Box. You've got to come forward. Both coming forward simultaneously, and there's a little bit of blood on the mother Chica and on Munoz. But it's a good fight, they're standing in the middle of the ring and they're exchanging blows. These two guys are in good, great condition. Well done to both the trainers for bringing them in such brilliant condition. That's a good little junior back to wait tight the fight. Well, he's not throwing enough punches now, Munoz. If he wants to take this title back to Argentina. He's going to have to up his work rate. And it's not over yet for the South African. Well, not by any stretch of the imagination. Blood on the nose of Ricardo Malachika. Both fighters still very keen to lift this vacant IBO Junior Bantamweight World Championship. And that'll mo motivate Munoz as well, that Ricardo's got a bloody nose. You'll know that he's catching. His punches are still so sharp for this deep into the fight. Ooh, it's a big swing and a miss from Malachika. It almost looked tired, didn't it? Well, nobody can take their foot off the pedal now in round number nine. Well, will Vusi Matalo get his first world champion and will Sam Fiorz get their first world champion? Ricardo will create history in a lot of ways. There was a nice combination from Ricardo Malachika on the inside. Right hand from Malachika. Oh, Left great. hand from Malachika. But he's only throwing single punches at the moment, is the South African. Great win the bell. Great run for Ricardo Malachika. He's back. He's back. With three rounds to go. Oh. Well, you know, in the fight game, it's such a difficult game, Kevin. I mean, guys come <laughs> forward, you know, especially the smaller guys, we hit each other with the head, we hit each other with the elbow. Uh, it's not the easiest sport in the world, I think there's easier sports. Kevin Munoz, you can learn chess if you want. Looks like he's breathing. Yeah. <laughs> chess is quite hard as well. Right, Munoz is going to have to up his game with three rounds to go. Otherwise, we're going to see South Africa crowned with the new world champion. So you what, there's going to be a towel in the hands of uh, referee Jesse Twart, who is looking anxiously over towards the corner of the man from Argentina, and maybe that's going to be tidied up as well. Final instructions then for both corners. The start of round number 10 of the schedule 12. Vacant RBO Junior Bantamweight Championship of the World. Live for you on Super Sports, your world of champions. Brought to you by Empress Palace and by World Sports Betting. I hope you're enjoying your evening of boxing. Munoz is deceiving because he's he stands in front of you and he gives you angles and he throws good punches and he's very fit. So he's putting up a good fight, the man from Argentina, Munoz, the man from South Africa, I've got to say, is boxing a beautiful fight. Well, it's going to reach a stage unless Munoz starts to dominate and to take points away from the South African. That uh, the man from Argentina is going to need a knockout, or knockdown at least. Now, if, he, if he doesn't win this round, Munoz, then he definitely needs a knockdown. Jika needs to keep popping the jab, and Munoz needs to close the gap. You've got to fight the style that your opponent doesn't like. So, in, in this case, I'd say Munoz, make the corner go back. 
cut off the ring. And, but, but the same goes for Malajika, make Munoz go back. And that's the guy winning the fight, the guy making the other guy go back. And the guy throwing the most punches, which right now is Ricardo Malajika. Just held back on the punch there, did Munoz. Nothing really landing at the moment, as we have one minute remaining in round 10 of a scheduled 12, and then there's only six minutes remaining. Little popping right hand from Malachika. That's a better right hand from the South African. Yeah, he's, he's worked it out, Malachika, that Munoz has got a sneaky left hook. He's worked it out well, but he's not getting tagged. Malachika fighting a good fight here, but Munoz, his conditioning is, it seems to be at its peak. Left-right combination from the South African. And a good fight from these two talented guys. Now, I wouldn't want to be a ringside judge if this does go to the scorecards. Nice right hand from Munoz. He's relying on the left hand, but I tell you what, Malachika's done enough to, first of all, circle away from the left hand, and then also, Keep his guard up. Yeah. Stepping right hand. Malajika is still quite comfortable on points here. Yeah. Two rounds to go. That's yeah, a tough fight. Round number 11. Round number 11. You understand? Two rounds are locked. How many rounds you can do in the gym? 24. Well, two rounds to go. One uh, starting to think, Kevin, that Bunyos from Argentina, he needs a knockdown. He needs something spectacular to get to get back into the fight. Yeah, I agree completely. Uh, this is a bit of a swelling over the left eye of the South African, Ricardo Malachika. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I had Malachika ahead by 98-94, but... Uh, it could be a little closer than that, but even if it is so one point closer, there's only two rounds remaining. That's, that, that was a lovely sight of Wusi uh, Matola talking to Ricardo Malajika like his baby. And it will be Wusi Matola's first world champion should Ricardo Malajika win this world title. So six minutes left, let's see what's going to happen. Round number 11, 11 the penultimate round. Ricardo Malajika against Kevin Luis Munoz. Munoz needs a knockdown to get back into this fight. Otherwise, South Africa is going to have a new IBO champion of the world. Nice start to the round by Malachika, the left-right combination. Just trying to establish his dominance. These are the championship rounds, Brian. Place you've been on many occasions, even further, because you fought 15 round fights. <laughs> yeah, I fought quite a few 15 rounds. I, I enjoyed them. But uh, yeah, I tried not to get hit. Did help a bit. <laughs> As it always does. <laughs> My defensive skills are okay, but that's all hard work. But back to the action here. You can see these two guys are well conditioned, well trained. They put in the time. They train for months and hours and hours every day, putting in the work to be in condition like us, to fight like us in the 11th round. Both fighters have given themselves enough chance to recover after their previous fights. Munoz last fought in February, Malajika last fought in March of this year. And they both look very well conditioned, they're both putting up a great fight tonight. Round 11 of 12 for a world title. Lunging forward again, back to his old tricks. Munoz nearly got caught coming forward there by Malajika. Malajika just as things worked out. He's not as much lateral movement as I say that he does move, does the South African. Left hand from Malachika. Yeah, Malachika's fought uh, a very cool, calculated fight and a smart fight, I must say. Not sure what the judges have got, but he's definitely eight on points. Yeah, I've got him ahead on points as well. My scorecard is uh, not anywhere near official. Don't want it to be either for that matter. Don't need that sort of pressure. How many what points have you what got, Kevin? No coming through. Yeah. Ricardo Malajika could be. They exchange good punches, both with right hands to Malajika and Munoz. 
Oh, nice right hand from Malachika. Another right hand from Malachika. Now he's sensing blood. Yeah. Is this South African? Malachika can feel that Albia World title getting closer by the minute. Three and a half minutes left. Needs to just conserve that energy a little bit. I can understand what his intentions are. Trying to end it here in round number 11. But he sent in some good punches. And there's another combination from Ricardo Malajica. Thanks, Malajica. Munoz is holding on now. And another good round for the South African. Three minutes to go to the championship for Ricardo Malajica. Can he win this world title? Well, we don't want to jinx it. He's got three minutes left. Keep the hands up tight, and he'll be South Africa's next world champion. Good job. 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 Good yeah, he needs a knockout. There, there, there's no other way, Kevin. He's way behind on points. He needs a knockout KO, otherwise he's going to lose this fight on points. Malajika's for a good calculated 12-round fight. Three minutes left and South Africa could be crowned go. with our new go, IBO go. world champion. I absolutely hands. agree with you. As uh, the two boxers will shake hands in the middle of the ring. The bell sounds for the start Box. of the 12th and final round of a schedule 12. No knockdowns. But there have been some good punches and there has been some good action. Live on your world of champions at Empress Palace. It's Palace Knights at the Palace of Dreams. Two minutes 42 seconds of Ricardo Malajika's dream, old time dream of becoming a world champion. Six brothers, all multiple champions in the amateurs. Trained by the late Billy in South Wales. Billy would be so proud now looking down, hopefully, from heaven. And of course, Anton Gilmore was turned Malajika professional. He'll be a Best proud man. Did a good job with Malajika. And of course now with Vusi Matala. Well, the Argentinian certainly came too far. It's no easy payday when you enter the square jungle. And uh, Munoz has really he, put up a good performance tonight. You just need to look at his record. Kevin, 16 and 1. He's from South America. The guy must be able to fight. And you can see he can fight. Only a second bout outside of Argentina. Did fight in Venezuela in uh, June of 2021, but he's never traveled to Africa before. And he's looking to a strong finish here. He needs a strong finish. He needs more than a strong finish. He needs a knockout. Ricardo Malachika seems to have things going his way at the moment. Chica staying out of trouble, but not allowing his opponent to overrun him and not uh, allowing Munoz to unleash the levers. Oh, a swing and a miss from Malachika. Minute remaining in the 12th and final round. Who will be crowned the new IBO Junior Bantamweight Champion of the World? You'll know. About a minute or so, and this is a dramatic knockout in the final seconds. Munoz on the offensive, but nothing's landing from the Argentine. Trying to punch on the break. Referee Dwight just uh, looks him in the eye. Malachika fighting off the back foot, but he's fighting nicely here. Combination from Malachika looking to end the round strongly again. Just 30 seconds remaining. Championship. Is it Malachika? Is it Munoz? 
Belgium Dolo as Ricardo Malagica on his shoulders. Will it be a world title for our South African boxer? This one goes to the scorecards. Never easy to go through 12 rounds of boxing. And, uh, Malachika waiting for the decision. Nicky Petra waiting for an interview. What a top lad this guy is. Not only is he a proper, proper fighter, but he's also a heck of a decent bloke. Malachika with a big smile on his face. Seems to think that the world title and the belt is going to be strapped around his waist as soon as we get uh, the confirmation of that from Duncan Pollock. Who is the man from Argentina going to be wearing that coveted belt and the championship of the junior bantamweight world champion. It will be revealed very soon and the longer it takes the more close it might seem but it seems like Duncan Pollock has the numbers Duncan Pollock will tell us what's happening in a moment or two as he uh, continues to have a discussion on the cheek looks very calm very cool very relaxed but there's uh, a sense of happiness in the Argentinian camp to the Argentine camp will have a keepsake in that pair of gloves with the Super Sport logo on it. Which way is this going to go? So the numbers have been tabulated and Duncan will tell us what they say. Ladies and gentlemen, I think as we did uh, after the SA title fight, before I give you the result of this one, a nice big round of applause for Kevin Munoz, Ricardo Malajica. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we had 12 rounds of championship boxing for the vacant International Boxing Organization Junior Bantamweight World Title. Our three judges scored it unanimously as follows. Judge Pumeza Zinakile from Greswold, Johannesburg, scored the fight 1-1-8-1-1-0. Judge Tony Nyangiwe from Dipkluf, Johannesburg, scored it 1-1-7-1-1-1. And Judge John Shipanuka from Lusaka, Zambia, scored it 1-2-0. 108 in favor of the winner and the new IBO junior bantamweight champion from South Africa, Ricardo the Magic Man Malatika. South Africa have a new world champion, and Brian Mitchell is there and to ask the champion how he feels about those 12 rounds right with me ricardo magic man malajika the iba junior bantamweight champion of the world you've made history for south hills you've made history for the malajika brothers you've made history for your country well done ricardo malajika as the iba junior bantamweight world champion talk to us champion now, thanks for everybody for coming out i really want to thank uh